which games are must bets for week two of the 2023 NFL season. What's going on, Gridiron Gamblers? It's Mitch here of the BLV, here to give you my best bets versus the spread for week two of the 2023 NFL season. My favorite picks to help you win some money this week two of the NFL season. If that sounds good, don't forget to gronk, spike the like button, and subscribe for weekly NFL best bets. Last week, week number one, we started off the season on fire. One of my best weeks ever. Eight and one versus the spread. Eight and two overall, because actually one of our losses was a teaser pick. So unfortunately, we started 0-1 with the teaser of the week, but we're going to get back on track with the teaser. But let's continue to be on fire in week number two, and let's waste no more time, man. Get in that comment section. Let me know your favorite picks versus the spread for week two. Let's begin with my first pick of week two, and that is... The Philadelphia Eagles on Thursday night football, minus six over the Minnesota Vikings. The Philadelphia Eagles, I think, are being a little underrated in this game. I understand that Kenneth Gainwell is not playing. James Bradbury's not playing. And one of their safeties, Blankenship, banged up. Do I care? Not really. They're not playing the New England Patriots on the road, in the rain, in the Tom Brady tribute game, featuring one of the best defenses in football. They're playing at home on a short week in their building at the link with their crazy fans in a matchup where they dominated the Vikings last year. I believe they won 24 to 7. I recall Justin Jefferson struggling more than any other matchup in the NFL that year versus Darius Slay. Not James Bradbury, by the way. Darius Slay. Their offensive line is completely healthy. They've had a week to go through some of their deficiencies offensively. Try to work through that. Jalen Hurts has the rust off. They're going to be able to move the football at will in this game. There is no way from a personnel standpoint that a Minnesota Vikings defense that is without Marcus Davenport is going to be able to stop the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, this is not the Patriots defense. This is Philadelphia's all-star offense with two of the best receivers in football, the best offensive line in football, an elite tight end, a great quarterback who can run and pass against one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Yeah, Brian Flores is a good coach, but there's only so much you can do when you're completely outmanned on the outside. So if you send blitzes, you send heat at Jalen Hurts, you're getting toasted on the outside. It's not like playing New England. And then you can't really rush four because you're never going to get pressure. The Eagles are going to put up like 30 in this game. And defensively, they might have some issues in the secondary, but their pass rush is going against an O-line in the Vikings that's without their center, Garrett Bradbury. So I believe that, again, Jalen Carter is going to feast on an undermanned offensive line. This pass rush for the Eagles is real legit. And as long as the Eagles get a couple stops here at home in their building, which is tougher to play at primetime Kirk, six points? To me, they easily win by seven plus. So I'm taking the Eagles on Thursday night. Two different caliber of teams, two different tiers. My second best bet for week number two is the classic, classic, classic bounce back overreaction spot. I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks getting five and a half. I actually bet it at six only on the BLV Patreon link in the description. Cheap plug. Seattle Seahawks plus five and a half versus the Detroit Lions in Detroit. I understand Detroit coming off a win over the Chiefs. I understand that they've had 10 days, and I understand that 
It's at home for Detroit, so their fans, especially after a Chiefs win, they're believing the hype. They're going to be rowdy. It's going to be great. Seattle is a well-coached football team. I respect Pete Carroll. I respect his history. I respect his legacy. I respect his ability to get his team fired up after they completely disappointed after a terrible week one performance. And I personally am not believing that Geno Smith all of a sudden has turned into a pumpkin. I believe Geno Smith is now going to be playing a defense that he actually played good against last year. He torched this defense last year. The Seattle Seahawks beat the Detroit Lions last season, and the game was in the 40s. So the Seattle Seahawks, I think, will score points. I think DK Metcalf will torch whichever Detroit corner is on him because I don't think any of these guys can cover DK Metcalf in a game that he was completely frustrated in last week. I think he's going to take over this game. Kenneth Walker will provide the balance. JSN should provide a little bit of moving the chains. I'm not so sure what's going on with Tyler Lockett. And obviously the tackle status is a little concerning for Seattle, but it's not like they're playing a great pass rush here. This is an average Lions pass rush with one guy that really hurts you. Jason Peters was signed to give them at least a solid floor off the bench if need be. I think Seattle's offense gets back on track with balance. Geno being comfortable in the dome environment, not playing a Rams defense that actually schematically gives him issues. And that's what I want to talk about here. The reason the Seahawks lost is because Sean McVay owns Pete Carroll. Other than last year, Sean McVay had basically beat Pete Carroll in every single game. Like, in a row. So, the Rams of old kind of showed up last week. And McVay of old took Pete Carroll to school. But I believe this is a different matchup. And I think that the defense of Seattle... While they don't have the greatest unit, if Jamal Adams is back, Devin Witherspoon is in, that should definitely provide a boost in the secondary to help them cover. I think a little bit of an overrated passing attack by the Lions. They didn't look great to me against the Chiefs without Chris Jones. So I think Seattle can hang in this game absolutely. A bounce back for the Seahawks. I don't necessarily think they'll win. They have a chance. But I think they'll definitely keep this within a touchdown. So give me the five and a half with the Seahawks. My third best bet for week number two, I'm taking the Kansas City Chiefs, another bounce back 0-1 team. The Chiefs, favored by, I bet it at three. You can get it at three and a half. I don't think it's going to go back down because Travis Kelsey is likely going to play in this game. Chris Jones is back. And I feel like that's going to transform the Chiefs. On top of Andy Reid having a whole week of film, actually more than a week, 10 days they've had to prepare for this game, of saying, oh, you guys suck, right? Everyone thinks you suck now because Kadarius Tony can't catch. Mahomes, you're nothing without Kelsey. Defense, you couldn't make the stops when you needed to on the ground. So the Chiefs, a championship football team with a lot of leadership, they're going to be angry now, right? They got a wake-up call in week number one that they're not invincible, So they go to Jacksonville, which, yeah, can be a weird place to play. But I watched the Jags play last week. I wasn't impressed with their offensive line. I think they're going to get bullied by Chris Jones' return. I think they're going to get bullied by Mike Dana here. Dana. And I feel like the Chiefs' secondary is very underrated. It's a lot better than the Colts. And I think they can at least respectably cover Calvin Ridley. Like, I think McDuffie can do a fair enough job. And if not, LeJarius Sneed can do a decent job enough job and it really felt like Trevor Lawrence was one-dimensional in that game I don't think they're really gonna run all over the Chiefs either and again I just can't imagine this Chiefs team going 0-2 so I'm banking on them winning and also banking on them covering this game my fourth best bet was a late addition but it just makes too much sense in my mind it's a weird one it's a little uncomfortable But I'm once again fading the Justin Fields hype machine and I'm fading the Chicago Bears. We made money on the Packers last week against the Bears. We're going to make money on Baker Mayfield and the Bucs this week at home over the Chicago Bears minus two and a half. At three, it's a little bit less enticing. But at two and a half, there are two and a halves out there. I would bet the Bucs. 
Tampa Bay, from a defensive standpoint, is a good football team. And if they have any weaknesses, it's the pass defense. Well, I have news for you. Justin Fields can't throw the football. Okay, the Bears can't throw the football. Their passing attack is pathetic. And they really don't want to pass the football. Okay, there is one three-interception game in the career of Justin Fields. It came against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense two years ago. As a rookie, Justin Fields threw three picks to Todd Bowles' defense. Todd Bowles is a coordinator that is really good against running quarterbacks. We saw him dismantle Jalen Hurts in that one playoff game a couple years back. We've seen him play Lamar Jackson really well. We've seen him got guys like, you know, all over. Really, Todd Bowles has done a fabulous job at containing mobile quarterbacks. And what he often does is he overloads the front. He is going to do everything he can in his preparation for this game to not allow Justin Fields to get the edge and not allow the Bears to run the ball. He's going to force the Bears to throw the ball. And then when they're throwing the ball, he's going to blitz Justin Fields' brains out. And he's also going to show different coverages that he's never seen before. It's a really tough challenge for a quarterback that doesn't really read coverage well. And that is not great at not taking sacks. So the Bucs are going to get a lot of sacks. The Bucs are going to contain the run because they've got a lot of big people up front in the middle and they're going to get set the edge because they're going to have so many people at the line. I guarantee you they're going to play bear fronts in this game. And then on the other side of the ball, the Bears defensive line is pathetic. They can't rush the quarterback. So I'm not really concerned that Baker's going to be under duress. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin have great matchups in this game. And the run game should be a little bit better here because the Bears defense was historically bad last year. Bad in week one against the Packers, against the run as well. I think White will be able to keep that balance going for the Bucs. And look, the Bears haven't won a game in 324 days for a reason. So I'm taking Tampa Bay, minus two and a half. My fifth best bet is on Monday Night Football. I am taking the Cleveland Browns. Yes, the Browns. A lot of people are going to be betting the Steelers again. I'm fading that. I just think when you lose Deontay Johnson on offense with already a very bad scheme, you know, that means when your scheme is that bad under Matt Canada and your Jimmys and your Joes are injured, Deontay Johnson injured, the downgrade from Deontay Johnson to Allen Robinson or Calvin Austin is substantial, right? George Pickens already is a guy that's basically a contested catcher. He's not a separator. This passing game is going to really struggle to get open against a really good secondary in Cleveland, Denzel Ward and those guys, and then an awesome pass rush. We saw what the 49ers did against the Steelers in Pittsburgh. I think Cleveland can do the same. Miles Garrett looks like a man on a mission. Zadarius Smith is playing at a high level still. Dalvin Tomlinson is a beast. They're not going to be able to run the ball up the middle. Love the hybrid nature of Schwartz's approach last week against Joe Burrow. I feel like we're going to see a Browns defense dominate this game once again, especially the pass game. And I feel like the Steelers are not a good running team. Their offensive line cannot open holes, and the scheme is really bad. And Pickett under pressure looked bad last week. So all the hype the Steelers were getting in the preseason looks completely false. The defense for Pittsburgh, yeah, is pretty good up front, but they're missing Cameron Hayward. He's gone. This is a Browns team that can really run the rock. And without their big man in the middle, that's concerning. The linebackers are not great. I don't see them covering Najoku particularly well in this game. And the matchups outside favor the Browns as well. Amari Cooper is a great route runner, a lot like Brandon Ayuk. I think he could also have a big game if Deshaun has time. So I feel like the Browns will win this through their defense, but their offense will do enough on the ground with balance. Deshaun Watson running it, throwing it to Amari Cooper and David Njoku. That they'll win this game, they'll cover this game. I think the Steelers are a team that a lot of people are going to take just because Mike Tomlin is a dog. I'm going to take the Browns because they're the better football team, period. At number six, my sixth best bet, I'm going with the Washington Commanders plus three and a half. And this is just really simple to me. 
Like, the Broncos just continue to be overrated. I don't really get it. Yeah, the game's in Denver. Okay, great. The game was in Denver last week versus the Raiders. The Raiders beat the Broncos, and they probably should have beat them by more. Jimmy Garoppolo threw a pick on the one-yard line. If not for that, you know, the game probably would have been a little bit worse from a score standpoint. The Washington Commanders beat the Cardinals, and yeah, they didn't cover, and I think the public's going to hate that because a lot of people probably bet on them. I didn't. But they didn't allow a defensive touchdown. The touchdown came from, I believe, a fumble. So... Yeah, Washington's O-line, Washington's quarterback play, a little suspect. But is it more suspect than the Denver offense, an offense that was the worst in football last year, an offense that scored 16 points against one of the worst defenses in football last year, the Las Vegas Raiders? Even with Sean Payton, it didn't look great. And Washington has a much better front than the Raiders. Washington has a better secondary than the Raiders, right? Washington's defense is way better than the Raiders. Maybe their offense is worse, but they still got weapons. McLaurin, Dotson, Gibson, Robinson, Samuel. So I think Washington can keep this competitive, if not win the game. Three and a half just is too many points that you're giving me with a bad football team, the Denver Broncos. Those are my best bets versus the spread as for the teaser of the week, I'm going to take the New England Patriots at home on Sunday Night Football and tease them from two and a half, potentially three points, to eight and a half or nine points. And then I'll take the 49ers to go two and oh, Kyle Shanahan owning his son, Sean McVay, from eight to two. 49ers will win the game. They're the best team in football. Too much talent against an undermanned Rams team in that situation. 49ers win by at least a field goal. Patriots cover at least a possession here. I almost made the Patriots a best bet at two and a half or three as well versus Miami. But my problem is the injury report. So I need more clarification which is another reason to follow me on Patreon because I'll release the bet when it does happen. Check out Patreon, link in the description. That's where you can get all of my bets. Gronk spike the like button if you haven't already. Comment any questions you may have and subscribe for more. It's Mitch. Good luck on your bets this week and we'll see you for week three. Peace.